you think a solar flare is something like this? What do the flares or explosions on the sun mean? And why are they so important for us? I'll explain all of it in a moment. Of course, the video in the introduction is exaggerated to show what a solar flare would look like because it's impossible to see a flare like that. In fact, it's impossible for us to see a normal solar flare from Earth with our own eyes. You need some equipment for that? When we look at the sun from Earth, it seems very calm, like it will never change, right? But the reality is very different. These were some of the activities happening on the sun. The nuclear fusion reactions that power the sun's core, which is at 15 million degrees Celsius, generate electromagnetic energies. And on the surface of the sun, the combination of heat and light creates interesting images. One of the interesting images is these oval lines on the sun. The gases on the sun are constantly in motion, and this circulates, stretches, and bends the magnetic fields. Eventually, these oval lines that we see appear. Another thing that arouses curiosity is these small dark spots on the sun. These are called sunspots. This name was given to describe the dark spots on the surface of the sun. They appear dark because they are cooler compared to other regions of the sun. So because the surrounding area is very bright, these parts look black to us. Still, the spots are very hot, about 3,600 degrees Celsius. This is similar to the color change we see in embers when we light a fire. The black areas on a piece of wood that has turned into embers are cooler than the yellow parts. But if you try to touch the black part, you'll get badly burned because it's still very hot. Now let's get to the really terrifying part, solar flare. A solar flare is essentially a magnetic event related to sunspots. In short, it's the release of intense energy just above the surface of the sun. But don't be fooled by how simply I explained it. If we were to release about 10% of the energy in the sun, it would be roughly a million times the energy of all the nuclear weapons on Earth. You can imagine the rest. These explosions usually move at very high speeds and emit a large amount of radiation into space. Let me show you a video recorded on April 16, 2012. It looks incredible, doesn't it? We can clearly see the scattering of particles after the solar flare, and most of them are falling back onto the surface of the sun. If this flare in 2012 hadn't happened nine days earlier, it could have caused serious damage to the Earth. For example, this part of the solar flare might seem small to you. Indeed, it looks very small compared to the massive size of the sun. But next to a tiny solar flare, the American continent looks just this small. Take a look at what we're up against. This is an image taken by the Solar Orbiter satellite from the sun towards the Earth. And this shows the position and size of the Earth, which remains in darkness in the satellite image. The intensity of these eruptions on the sun, just like earthquakes, cannot be predicted yet. However, the periods when they are likely to be more intense have already been determined. This is called the sunspot cycle. Sunspots continue in a cycle like storms that repeat themselves approximately every 11 years. Many sunspots indicate a solar maximum with intense eruptions, while few sunspots signify a solar minimum. The period when eruptions on the sun are most frequently observed is the time called the solar maximum, when these spots are seen the most. In a moment, we'll see if we're in danger for the future, but first I'll take you back a long time ago to one of the days when humanity experienced this solar eruption most intensely, the year 1859. That day, known as the Carrington event, occurred during Solar Cycle 10, Solar cycles are progressions that started in 1749 and increase every 11 years. Amateur astronomers named Richard Carrington and Richard Hudson observed an incredible number of sunspots on the sun from August 28, 
1859 to September 2. And by September 1, the process had already begun. Massive magnetic energy cycles spread over the sunspots. A magnetic bomb twisting and getting ready to release its energy is about to explode. And this. The expanding bubble made up of subatomic particles and energy spread toward the solar system and reached Earth in as little as 18 hours. In this image, you first see a low-level solar flare. And this is the flare that occurred in 1859. It looks pretty scary. And these are the pieces of paper that have been kept since that day called magnetograms, which are records from systems that measure the Earth's magnetic field. Especially on September once, the lines almost went off the charts. After the solar flare in 1859, the telegraph systems of all Europe and North America collapsed. Telegraph poles were sparking with electricity. The effects of the radiation on humans are still unknown. For the people living in 1859, the impact of that day was only short-term communication problems. But that was all. Oh, and the mesmerizing auroras that formed in the atmosphere offered people a visual feast. Nothing else happened, because people weren't dependent on electricity. A month later, those sunspots that were observed would be drawn like this by Christopher Carrington. People of that time were perhaps spared from major problems, because they didn't have technology, maybe even from dying. But after that date, nothing was the same, and it would never be the same again. In 1965, during a time when electricity had spread all over the world, a solar flare caused a 13-hour power outage in America, resulting in an economic loss of about $100 million. Although it wasn't related to a solar flare, in 1977 there was a power outage in New York caused by a lightning strike. The outage lasted for 25 hours. After the outage, 4,500 people were detained for looting. 5,000 police officers were injured and thousands of women were harassed. Nine months after the power outage, birth rates had skyrocketed. Maybe you've seen the movie called The Purge. In the film, all crimes were allowed for one day. Well, in 1977, it was as if The Purge had actually happened. According to today's data, just a one-hour outage in the United States costs $458 million. For a single day, it's $11 billion. For Turkey, this is only a daily loss of $161 million. If we were to do this for the whole world, it would mean an economic loss of $29 billion for a single day. If there is an outage, the United States would be by far the country that suffers the most. So, could a terrible solar flare happen anytime soon? The good thing is that the Earth has an invisible magnetic shield for protection. The bad thing is that this magnetic shield now has some weaknesses. So, a weak spot has started to form in the Earth's protective shield. As a result, if the magnetically charged gases that will emerge after a strong solar flare pass through these weak spots, that's when terrible things can happen. A powerful flare would first destroy the satellites around the Earth. Then, it would probably pose serious dangers for the astronauts in orbit. And when these harmful rays reach the Earth, they would cause long-term power outages and problems that could lead to countless loss of life. But let me tell you something that uh, will put you both at ease a little. Most likely there won't be a very serious explosion in the coming years. Because right now it's the 25th year. We're in the solar cycle and this is one of the periods when sunspots are seen the least. In fact, these sunspots will gradually decrease until 2030. Take a look at this. In the middle of every century, sunspots increase, which means the likelihood of solar flares happening goes up. The Carrington event also happened in the middle of the 19th century, in 1859. So, when someone says that a solar flare or intense eruptions could happen in 2024 or 2025, 
These are completely unrealistic comments made just to attract attention. I don't know the intentions of those who make or publish such news. But to tell the truth, 21, a severe solar flare is not expected until at least the mid-21st century rest assured. But I should also mention this. In recent times, this weakening magnetic field of the Earth may be powerless against severe solar flares. And if another Carrington event happens in this era, it would mark the beginning of a dark age for humanity. Even our phones and even for growing food and pumping water. But after the blackout, everything broke down. Car batteries, jet turbines, even batteries, they all shut down forever. People starved as governments collapsed. Medicine and fire services were unavailable. Militias rose up. The smart ones left the city. The ones who stayed died there.